Hello, my name is Stephen Shalders, ex-world class athlete and now IT professional. In this video, I want to demonstrate how you can use HashiCorp Terraform Cloud for your automation to reduce time, effort and cost, whilst reducing manual errors, giving your business more time to focus on your primary objectives. My intention is to keep this particular video quite short by simply demonstrating at a high level how you can store your infrastructure's code in a remote repository such as GitHub and at the same time create an integrated relationship with Terraform Cloud so that you can run Terraform from their own virtual machine runners within their cloud environment as well as store the Terraform state file there also. You can use Terraform automation to configure many technologies including the Cisco ACI. In this video I will be configuring the Cisco ACI by converting configuration data that I've collected within an Excel spreadsheet and then I will convert that data into Terraform variables. Then I'll push those changes to a remote repository in GitHub. Terraform Cloud will be configured to automatically detect the GitHub changes and will create a Terraform plan ready for me. Then I'll log into Terraform Cloud and will review and approve the plan to apply the changes, thus permitting Terraform to remotely apply the configuration to the Cisco ACI. Within the video, I'll have two separate demonstrations. In demo number one, I will have Terraform create the ACI tenants bridge domains, VRFs, application profiles, subnets, static port, and DVS associations. Then, in example number two, to show Terraform's versatility, I will demonstrate how I use a separate repository and state file to track ACI contract changes. I'll quickly log into the Cisco ACI so that it's ready for when I need to come back to confirm the config changes that Terraform applies. As previously stated, in this example, I've collated the various configuration data that I want Terraform to later apply. I won't go into great detail with the specific contents of the ACI configuration within the Excel spreadsheet, but for those interested in ACI, I will browse through the various sheets that I've created so that I can later confirm that Terraform has applied what I have specified. The key takeaway here is to demonstrate that Terraform is vendor agnostic. If we use our imagination, each of these sheets within the Excel spreadsheet could represent various vendor configuration that forms part of a much larger infrastructure as code deployment. For example, one sheet could represent the virtual machine configuration for AWS, a separate sheet may be dedicated to Azure, Google, vCenter, Kubernetes and so on. If storing the content in this manner, you would still need to convert the data into HashiCorp configuration language. However, once this is completed, you can go on to create automated pipelines offering fantastic benefits such as it enhances workflow efficiencies, is time saving, and it has a high degree of accuracy, consistency, and is easily repeatable. It's important to understand once you have captured the data, if it's not already compiled in a Terraform format, then you will need to convert it. In this example, I'll convert the data into structured Terraform variables using a Python script that I've created. I'll run the Python script and then I'll quickly confirm the Terraform variable file has been created. Next, I'll apply those changes to my local Git repository. I'll commit those changes and will add the following descriptive message stating what I've changed. In this case, I'm initially creating the tenants, application profiles, endpoint groups, VRFs, bridge domains, static port and DVS associations. I'll push those changes up to the remote GitHub repository. I'll browse to the remote GitHub repository. Yes, I can confirm the Excel document and the Terraform variables file has been updated. Logging into HashiCorp Cloud and accessing the Workspaces tab, I can see Terraform has automatically created a plan for my particular repository. The Terraform plan is waiting for me to manually approve or discard the change. I'll click to view the Terraform plan to confirm what are the proposed changes that will be made to the ACI environment. Actually, before I view the details of the plan change, I'll quickly click on the variables tab. I use these variables to be stored outside of Git that are mainly secrets, such as the username, password and web URL. 
Okay, let's take a quick look at the proposed Terraform change plan. The Terraform plan reads the current state of any already existing remote objects to make sure that the Terraform state is up to date. It compares the current configuration to the prior state, noting any differences. Then it proposes a set of change actions that should, if applied, make the remote objects match the configuration. We can expand each variable for further detailed information. Scrolling down, I'll confirm and apply those changes as I'm happy for these changes to be applied to the Cisco ACI. I'll add a message for reference purposes. Of course, if this was in production, I'd spend more time thoroughly evaluating the changes due to be applied and would input a more meaningful comment. Terraform Cloud is designed as an execution platform for Terraform and can perform Terraform runs on its own disposable virtual machines. This provides a consistent and reliable run environment and enables advanced features like Sentinel policy enforcement. Scrolling up and down, I can see everything's applied. I'll go back to the Workspaces tab and again here we can see Terraform has confirmed the change has been applied. That's great. Terraform has applied all the changes that I had specified in the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so I'll have a quick scan through the tenant and then can confirm some of the configuration. I can see the tenant application profile and EPG has been created. Here I can see the bridge domain has been created and has been associated to the EPG. Within the domains tab, we can see the DVS associations and physical domains. Here we can see the static port associations. While I'm within the tenant, I'll take a look at the bridge domain and subnet associations. There's all the specific and granular bridge domain configuration that I specified. Here is the subnet and the configuration to go along with it. And finally, I can confirm the VRF has been created. So that concludes demonstration number one, and I'm ready to start demonstration number two where I create contracts, subjects, filters, filter entries, and contract associations to various endpoint groups. I'll clear the screen and I'll access a separate local repository that I've created purposely to keep track of the contracts and their associations separate to any other configuration. This way, Terraform is able to independently maintain and track the state for two separate repositories. Of course, I could just use the one repository for all my configuration, but I'd like to demonstrate how Terraform has the intelligence to track separate configuration instances. Again, within an Excel spreadsheet, I capture all the specific and very granular configuration that I want Terraform to apply. As before, I won't spend much time going through the specific ACI configuration within the Excel spreadsheet, as the focus within this particular video is to demonstrate the capabilities of Terraform automation and integration with GitHub. On this particular Excel sheet, I've created a contract matrix whereby you can apply the specific consumer and or provider contracts to various endpoint groups that require the contract. Simply apply the letter C for consumer and or the letter P for provider. It doesn't matter what order I input the letter P or C. As previously stated, if you are not initially capturing the data in a Terraform approved format, then of course it will be required that you convert the data into an improved Terraform format. For example, I'm using a custom Python script that I've created in order to convert the Excel data into Terraform variables that is specific to the Cisco ACI.
OK, so I've run the custom Python script and converted the data from the Excel sheet into Terraform variables. I'll apply and commit the changes to my local repository and will add the following descriptive message. Then I'll push those changes from my local repository to the remote GitHub repository that Terraform Cloud is synced with. And as such, Terraform Cloud will detect the changes automatically and therefore will create a plan ready for me to approve so I can apply those changes to the Cisco ACI or I can ignore or discard the changes. That's great. Within the workspaces, I can visually see the Terraform plan has been created ready for me to review the proposed changes. Again, in a production environment, you would spend the time evaluating the proposed changes. In this instance, I will approve the changes and will click the apply button so those changes can be applied to the Cisco ACI. Again, Terraform Cloud is performing this run within its own fleet of disposable virtual machines. Here we can see the contract, filters and subject have been created for this particular tenant. Expanding the subject, we can see the various filters that have been applied to the contract. The filter entries have been applied. I'll browse through the various tenants to confirm Terraform has applied the contract changes. I'll expand the application profile and EPG and I'll click on the contract section where I should see a consumer and provider contract named contract2 as per the Excel contract matrix. Actually, I'll browse back to the previous tenant as I want to confirm whether a consumer contract has been applied to the EPG. As per the contract matrix, I expect to see a consumer contract that's called contract3 being associated to the EPG. And finally, I'll access tenant1. I expect to see a contract called contract1 that's been created along with its various filters and filter entries and that should be applied to the EPG as a provider contract. That's great. I've used HashiCorp Terraform and GitHub to provide a consistent workflow to provision and manage my infrastructure throughout this lifecycle. In this next example, I'll demonstrate how I can delete, or rather, using Terraform terminology, destroy the environment. For example, Terraform will remove the configuration that it pushed to the Cisco ACI. Again, Terraform is creating a plan for me to manually approve or discard the changes. I can spend time reviewing the plan changes, and in this case, I'm asking it to remove all of the contracts, filters, subjects, and filter entries that I have pushed. Of course, I've only pushed one change so far, but as you can imagine, with the life cycle, there would be many changes applied. Terraform has the ability to remove all of the changes pushed due to its intelligence of keeping track of their infrastructure by the state file. As you can see, all of the contracts and its associations have neatly been removed. This demonstrates how quickly very large scale environments can be built, utilized, maintained and removed at lightning speed with incredible reliability, consistency and accuracy. Next, I'll destroy the tenant configuration that Terraform had applied in the first demonstration. This will remove the tenant and all of its underlying configuration that I had specified within the Excel spreadsheet. So both repositories have been Terraform destroyed. Let's take a look at where the Terraform state file is located. The primary purpose of Terraform state is to store bindings between objects in a remote system and resource instances declared in your configuration. When Terraform creates a remote object in response to a change of configuration, it will record the identity of that remote object against a particular resource instance and then potentially update or delete that object in response to future configuration changes. So that concludes my high level demonstration of automation in practice. I hope that you enjoyed and I'm sure I've left you with many questions. At a later date, I look to create more in-depth content to dive deeper with each of the technologies that I touched upon during this example. Thank you for watching.